Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I am Lonnie. Hey, I'm Candace. Welcome back. So this morning, uh, we do have some eBay orders to pull as usual, thankfully. Uh, we do have a good question this morning first that we thought we would tackle. Yeah. Give it a shot on. Don't even know exactly what we're going to say yet. I started out my morning. Um, I decided it's probably time to go ahead and start cross-listing our Halloween like costume type stuff. So I, I worked on that, and then I'll probably just go ahead and move all our Christmas stuff over to uh, Macari, Poshmark, Etsy, all that. So, Etsy too, huh? Yeah, we do have some like home decorative Christmas items I think could go on Etsy. Are are the have we cross posted the um, or cross listed the Nutcrackers to Etsy yet? No, and I guess it's probably about time, huh? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. I, I really think that Etsy might be a good. A really good place for those yeah so yeah i think I got, i've got the halloween stuff over there now we didn't have much left from last year we sold a lot of that costume stuff so what's left i did move over and then um i'm gonna start on christmas after that so um but we do yeah like lonnie said we do have a question it's from josh graf how has youtube changed your ebay business i have a small channel and i'm considering the pros and cons of sharing what i sell well, let's start off with what you think the cons are. The cons? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you, it's different now. Um, when I first started reselling, I I used, like, I went and watched a bunch of channels just trying to figure out, like, what I should be buying at garage sales to sell. Like, that's how I, that's how I found out what to buy and sell at first. Right. Otherwise, I didn't know. Right. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, I, I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, I got all, I got everything from YouTube at first. And then once I got into that, I was like, I'm kind of a natural performer to an extent. And I've, I've dabbled with YouTube before. And I was really like gung ho about reselling and just like, really, you remember how it was. Yeah. I, I would like, I was really amped up at first, you know? Yeah. Whenever Lonnie um, does something new, he puts everything into it. So it's not surprising. It, it's an obsession. It is. Yeah. He like, he, it consumes him. Yeah, it does. And so I, I became consumed with reselling and then uh, I wanted to be part of the community. And so... I threw my hat in the ring and started making videos too. And um, now there weren't as many channels back then. No, that's what yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah. It's a whole different environment. There, there weren't near as many. This is in 2016, so eight years ago, uh, seven years ago, and there weren't near. There were very few resale channels back then. Um, a big resale channel back then would have 10,000 subscribers. Now, 10,000 subscribers still impressive, but it's not considered big by any stretch at this point. Right. Uh, the competition is huge now. Like, I'm just... And the only reason I say that is because I'm not sure... Me, Candace and I have talked about this in the past. Like, if we didn't have a YouTube channel now already built already built now i'm not sure we could do it no i don't maybe think so. we could it's tough you know we watch um we watch new channels try to grow and it's hard i mean because there is so much competition right not that they don't have the quality content it's just so much out there yeah so and yeah. a lot of people a lot of people just aren't willing there's two there's actually okay there's three types of people are three types of channels are people that are trying out YouTube. Number one, someone that's just a natural at it. They try it and they kill it. And there are plenty of channels like that. Uh, they're rare though. There, there are, there are quite a few examples, but they're rare. Uh, the second kind, uh, I would say something like what I did. Um, I toiled away for about the first year, basically unknown, uh, after I think after about a year, had maybe like fifteen hundred subs or something somewhere in there, something like that. And then after two years, was maybe making a, a couple hundred bucks a month on YouTube, but it was still kind of a hobby thing. But spent just a ridiculous amount of time 
on it versus what we got back from it. Yeah, the payoff was not near what it should have been for it, the amount of hours he put in. No, into it. it wasn't minimum wage even, not even close. Right, right. And uh, honestly, it was... Um, Given the odds of, of it turning into something more is probably a bad bet. But that's that stage, though, where it's not really worth doing. It's just a question of um, not how bad do you want it, but but how much like it, how hard are you going to work for it? How and how and do you enjoy it? Even? Right. That's a big thing, too. Like. But, I think it comes across when people are putting out content and you can tell they just don't enjoy doing it. Right. I so, think you can kind of tell. Yeah. It, it, so that's why I'm, that's why I hesitate to just say go for it. I mean, I do think you should go for it if you want to and give yeah, it a shot. Try it, yeah. But if it's strictly a business move, it's going to be difficult to, to maintain, to maintain the effort through the times where it's just not even worth doing right like it's hard to know because i see other types of channels too people that have given it a shot and they continue to just spend gobs and gobs of time on it uh like during the work day even and it just is never going to happen yeah. and they don't give up right and they're just wasting not i hate to say wasting time because you never know when things could pop. I mean, some people just have channels for a hobby. So right. That could be the case. Right. Know? I've got I've got hobby channels too, so I get that. Yeah. But I don't spend any appreciable amount of time on them during work hours. That's the difference. Like when 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 I first started this channel, uh, actually it wasn't even this channel. It's Garage Flips six six years ago. Um. I. Honestly, I, I was spending time that I should have been spending on reselling, you know, and I just happened to get lucky. Yeah. And it, I mean, it is easier for us because there's two of us. So while he's putting time into the channel, I could still be listing, you know. And Right. So. But there is a, there is a call, like there's always a, uh, a, even for us, like things are up and going and, and YouTube is a nice, um, a nice additional source of revenue for us which is great like um that helps smooth out reselling bumps for sure right the highs and lows yeah and it's always good to have uh not have all your eggs in one basket right um although it kind of is all in one basket it is if we didn't have reselling we wouldn't have content so right exactly yeah. and we've definitely gotten uh like okay we make money from adsense uh, we've definitely made extra sales on eBay from it. Uh, we've had we, get, we gained knowledge and we yeah from we, our viewers um, a lot of knowledge. And um, another thing is that I mean there there is like some some truth to it. What is it? Uh, pay pay it forward? Pay it? What was that called? Because I learned I learned from YouTube, so mm -hmm. I'm just kind of paying it pay, back. Pay it forward. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, we we still do enjoy it, too. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like I said, it comes across whenever you can you can kind of sense or tell when someone is not putting everything into it. Like, they really just don't even enjoy doing it. They're just going through the motions. Um, and we kind of have a passion for it, so. Now, have we seen, have we actually seen the, the cons? The cons are time. Uh, I don't list near as much as I would otherwise. So there is a, uh, what, what is that called? Um, trade off. No, what, there's a word for it. There's a, uh, oh man. Like whenever you do something instead of something else, mm -hmm. that cost there. So it's not like, it's not like straight linear. Like we, like if we stop doing YouTube all together and all that revenue went away, that doesn't mean we would lose that much because that time that used to be sunk into YouTube would now be sunk into eBay, which would offset some of that loss, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. um, it is also nice for me to not have to do the same thing all day. Like I get to do different things. Yeah, he, he packs, he edits video, 
He lists items. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know the, the cons of sharing what you sell. Um, I mean, if if you if if you are a person that thinks that sharing information is potentially harmful, which it potentially is, um, like if if we show what we're selling here, we we have local viewers that watch, and sure enough they could definitely be out there buying that yeah, stuff they buy the stuff we would be buying so so then we have to find something else to buy and yeah. then share that yeah and then they they and then we once we share it then they buy that and then we gotta find something else to buy yeah i know, so. I know there's a lot of resellers that are not happy about um the free knowledge out there but like you said that's how you started you know yeah i i i i feel obviously we make videos so i feel a little differently about that um you have to take it with a grain of salt since we do make money from AdSense on YouTube. Um, but I feel like the world we live in now, information, uh, if you still think information is really that valuable, I think you're my, I think you're kind of wrong. I think it's the execution using that information because the information is already out there. You cannot put the internet back into a can and right. seal it up. Yep. It's too late. It's too late. Like like anything you can think of in the world that you want to know how to do, I can go on YouTube right now and find it. If I want to know, if I want to know how to fix this printer if it breaks, I could find somebody showing how to do it. Shoot, we have like we we learned how to. I mean, we're not we're not or I'm not good at all at this, but learn how to float sheetrock. Right. You know, just just anything you want to learn to do it's out there you know? right and that that used to all be before the internet that used to that information was part of the value someone had but now it just isn't the information does not have the hell you can get you can go take like um you can go watch mit and harvard lectures for free now you could take the whole course. Yep. <laughs> you know, like it's 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 ridiculous. But I, I don't want to go too far of that. So so in a nutshell, the cons for us would not necessarily apply to you because it's already built. But so if if you're thinking about doing this, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. Either sacrificing more of your time or sacrificing what you're putting into your eBay or reselling business. Right. That time has to come from somewhere. Right. So there's a cost. Yeah. There's there's a cost you are like are you willing to pay the price to maybe to have a fairly low shot of success like don't kid yourself it's hard because there's that other group that like they just keep on trying and it ain't never gonna happen and you know their friends and family will tell them never give up but sometimes you should like it's not everybody is good at everything or yeah, not or, I mean, or maybe like we're not saying don't give it a go that that's that's your decision and you know we're not saying not to but get maybe give yourself a time frame right hey, if i don't see any reaction from my results within this amount of time i you just need to be realistic you know right like i always looked at it like um uh, when i was doing it, i was like all right if I can, let's see if I can hit a thousand subscribers. Not that subscribers are the big number or anything, but that's what I used. And then once I hit a thousand, I'm like, okay, if I can hit a thousand, then I can hit ten thousand. Yeah. And once I hit that, I'm like, okay, if I can hit ten thousand, I bet I can hit a hundred. Like that's the way. But I've always got to see like progression. And if I would have ever gotten stuck at like a thousand subscribers, and then the thing just kind of fizzled out. Honestly, I, I would probably still upload every now and then, but it would have been time to give up and put that time into actually making money. Yeah, I mean, like like, like we said, if it's something you enjoy, maybe you would do it uh, once a month instead of one to five times a week or whatever it would be, you know? Yeah, I, I would ask um, small channel, considering the pros and cons of sharing what I sell, I, I, guess, I, I guess I would ask, like like what it is you want to get out of it right you know and i i guess i'll i guess i will also go watch some of your videos and see yeah but um 
I think the spirit of it is you have to be okay and and be good with sharing with others. Like your heart has to be in it. I think. What do you? I mean, do you agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, well, that's what I think, anyways. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people that are doing it that, whose heart probably isn't in it, but that wouldn't have worked for me, because at some point, at some point, uh. <laughs> If it if you're not really into it, it will burn. It'll burn you out even if you are into it. And if you're not really into it, it will definitely burn you out. Mm -hmm. So, yep. best of luck with it. Yeah. Certainly not trying to talk anybody out of it, but there is a price you pay. There is. Yep. And the the payoff is not guaranteed by any stretch. It's getting harder and harder. Actually, uh, I went and glanced at a few of um, Josh's videos, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm going to change what I said because he does have a little experience already. I think you got a shot, honestly. Yeah, you seem, <laughs> to me, you seem comfortable in front of the camera. So, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I as think. As long as you enjoy doing it, um, I, I would say don't give up yet. You know? I, I've, see, I, I've seen plenty of, I've looked at plenty of like other people with small channels. And you have a shot if you want it. Yeah. If you want it, you, it's there. Mm hmm I've seen other people with channels like that size, and I'm like, okay, I see why they're that size. The only reason your channel isn't bigger is because you haven't put the effort in yet. Right. So, yeah. If I were you, um, Josh, I would do it. I, I would go for it. I would go ahead and uh, make the big commitment and and just go for it. It looks like you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Can is still... But it looks like probably a half-hearted effort, if I had to guess. Yeah. You know, a couple videos a month or so. Or maybe, yeah, it looks like you kind of, yeah. I would give, Josh, I've changed what I'm going to say. For your specific case, I would give it a real shot. Because I think I think you do, you, you, you have the potential. Yeah. If you put it into it. Yeah. But we do have, we have orders to pull though. All right, first item going out is in the D&D drawer, Mario Kart 64 for N64. <laughs> This guy right here. Sold for $30. Okay. We have a adult size cat harness going out. CC5. It's black with gold polka dots. CC5? Yep. All right. $8 for that. Okay. Um, two of those Japanese wrestling figures on 10 Alpha. Oh, okay. Uh, bushy and evil. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go ahead and take this thing down. Okay, so bushy and evil. Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably bushy or something. Probably so. Uh, I have. Oh, I have two evils. Okay. Do you have an evil? Does oh, it say? Um, a. Evil A. Evil A. And bushy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Those sold together for seventy nine dollars and ninety eight cents. I'm assuming they were thirty nine ninety nine each. Yep. Nine Alpha. We sold a, a Ford truck crank handle, door crank handle. Nine Alpha. Window crank handle. Yeah. Couldn't get it out. <laughs> um. Oh. That's gonna be way under here, I think, in this box right here. The auto parts sales are definitely is it is it uh right, it's a window crank hang on the handle for seven six nine one two is that it you don't have a part number on here oh i don't okay it's for a ford truck 87 and 96. okay we're looking for seven six nine four six it goes on a ford truck 87 and 96 a Ranger 89 and 92 and a van 92. They don't care about that. <laughs> they do not care about that. 76946? 76946. Got it. That's over $10. Okay. Yep, these auto parts have been a slow, super slow little gold mine, I guess. Although, man, they have really slowed down. I know, but if you build up enough stuff like that, You'll sell like something every day. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta have like a hundred sheds of stored in. <laughs> in the Joe drawer, we sold an underwater wrist compass. Joe drawer? Comp 
compass or compass? How do you say uh, that? Compass. I used to say compass. Might be wrong. Yeah, we actually had a, a question about this. A couple of months ago. Yeah, they asked if it kept good time or something. No, not and at I'm all. Like, I'm like, no, it doesn't. It's not a watch. <laughs> $20 for that. Yeah, it's a compass. Compass. Uh, we sold another pillow sham. P35. Yeah, when we bought those from Guy, when we bought all those from Guy, I thought they were a bunch of pillowcases, but it turned out it was just a big sham. Okay, check this out, y'all. Look, I bought a CP35 right here. <laughs> Look at that. Man, how lucky can you get? Yeah, I'll hold it. Give me the bucket, and you can get it out of there. How lucky can you get? Boop. Right ya. Gotta like that. That was a song from the movie Top Secret. What's that? How lucky can you get? Really? <laughs> Who sang it? Val Kilmer. Wait, Val Kilmer sang the song? Yeah. Oh, I didn't it know you You've never seen that movie? It has a cow on the front of it? Yeah. The cover? It, oh. it was a musical. He, okay. He played like an Elvis type figure. Nope, I do not remember that. I think that was the name of the song. All right, so that's all for $30. Nice. D and D drawer. We sold another Star Trek Deep Space Nine card. Forty-seven more. One of these days. Three dollars for that card. Three dollars at a time. <laughs> it's like a car park. Park. Car park. See, all we need is to have like. I don't know how many we would need. Like what, a hundred thousand of different things like this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our next order has three figures on it. The first one is on Eight Echo. It is Cyclops B. Eight Echo. Yep. Cyclops B. Eight Delta Echo. Oh, they are stacked right here. Cyclops. I'm assuming that's the only Cyclops that's down there. Is this pretty sure yep that's black widow and bullseye okay all right i got cyclops all right the next one is nine bravo it's gonna be saber tooth nine bravo saber tooth it's a more modern marvel legends in a black box in a black box yeah okay oh i got you I think it's a uh, saber tooth. Yeah, I got it. And then uh, oh, I thought it was black box. Yeah, it is from the front, huh? Uh, for Bravo, a Scarlet Witch. Okay, this must be her right here. For Bravo, Scarlet Witch. Right on. Got it. Three of those together sold for $55.97. Alright, we sold another cat harness on 8 Delta Adult Navy Blue with Stripes. 8 Delta? Yep. Man, the cat stuff is better than the dog stuff, huh? Or sells faster, anyway. I mean... Yeah. This morning, I'm like, man, we we didn't. There was a lot of cat stuff they had we didn't buy because we were just trying to buy dog stuff, and some cat stuff like kind of slipped in. But now I'm like, man, I guess we should have got the cat stuff too. Huh? Definitely. Um, eight dollars for that. Good deal. Six Bravo. We saw the Pistol Pete Maravich book. Six Bravo. Ah, I got it. Pistol Pete. Yep, $17 for that. Yeah, that's a cool book. It's got a lot of photos and stuff in there. And then on 6 Charlie, uh, Fujifilm Instax Mini Camera. Yeah, I just listed this yesterday. Um, did actually test it. Yeah, he took a picture of me. Yeah, it had some film in it. <laughs> 
So I just popped some batteries in and then uh, took a picture and yeah, worked perfect. $30 for that. With the uh, with three packs of film. That's with the film. Without the film, you'd probably be looking at like 20 bucks or so. Yeah. Maybe a little less even. Right, that's everything except for one item we have in storage to go pick up. So. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff packed and then, uh, oh, we actually are picking up from um, Granger today. Yep. Made a made a pretty a good pretty size, size order. order. We ordered some boxes and some craft bubble mailers. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna go pick that up. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff packed. All right. Uh, all that stuff is out. Awaiting carrier. I did go to storage. We actually sold our other Banshee. Uh, what, what what franchise is that from? Avatar. It was sixty five dollars. Okay. I remember. Um, we bought two of these for twenty five. Mm -hmm. And we sold the other one, I think, for for full price also. Yeah, we did. So we ended up doing that. Ended up being pretty good. That ended up being one hundred and thirty in sales um, from a twenty five dollar buy. Yep. So go ahead and get this packed. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two. Hello, good morning, welcome. <laughs> we had another decent sales night and um, we sold something on Etsy too, which has been cross-listed for a few months now. So that was exciting to see. Um, we're gonna start out this morning with a question and I think it's for me actually. Yeah, I'll read it then. Okay. Since normally you're the question reader, but- uh... Let's switch places. Okay. <laughs> this is uh this is from Panzer, longtime viewer, shedhead, and uh, comment moderator. So thank you very much for doing that, Panzer. Uh, Panzer is saying, but well, Panzer is also known as Wayne, aka Wayne, not that Wayne, though. <laughs> not that yeah, Wayne. Yeah, you gotta clarify that. Yes, <laughs> th that's how I remember Panzer's name, though, is because of Wayne. <laughs> uh, not the crazy Wayne. Or not that crazy, Wayne. Uh, question for Candace. Looking back, do you wish you quit your job earlier? Or was it about the right time? Um, and, and why don't you give, just to give people some uh, context, tell them how you quit your job. What happened? Okay, so I, I worked at a bank. This was, it'll be three years this December, right? Yeah, right. Three, or November, was it December or November? December, I think. We're coming up on three years. Um, I worked at a bank, um, a very big nationwide um, bank. Um, I loved working there. I loved the company. They were so good to us, to the employees. Um, loved my coworkers. And I really, I liked my manager a lot. And I know that she liked me a lot, um, but there was just some things I couldn't get past and without going into, into details, it just, it, it kept building up and building up and um, the pressure finally got to me. There was a lot of pressure on me. I did a lot at that bank. So the pressure finally got to me and one day I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I just handed over my keys and walked out. I called Lonnie crying. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> and he's like, quit, you know? No, I, well, I came, Candace called me crying. I went over to the bank went to the break room she was in the break room crying I, I gotta be careful i don't know exactly what i'm supposed to say or not say yeah. but she told me she didn't she couldn't do it anymore and he's like okay and, we'll figure it out you know yeah and uh I'm so like, i walked out that day i do regret regret the way i did it um it was a very emotional day i don't regret doing it just the way i did it um, and what was the question? Do you wish you would have done it earlier? I don't wish I would have done it earlier. I got a lot out of that job, a lot of skills. Um, I met a lot of wonderful people, made friendships. So no, I don't regret doing it earlier, I, but I think it was the right time. You know what I regret? What? Not having that health insurance. <laughs> yeah. That's a big one. I mean, that's something to really consider if, if you're um, someone who your spouse is considering joining you and reselling. Take a look at the price of health insurance. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're paying not to. I don't want to go into too much detail, but we're paying over over a thousand dollars a month now for for three of us. Yeah. And uh, the cover. And the other benefits too, like I had awesome four hundred one k. Right. Um, you know, life insurance, just all those benefits. You, you're so take, giving up. There's a cost. There is. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, we did give up a lot financially, but I, I'm a lot happier and a lot saner, I think. Yeah. Well, and plus, you don't have to ask permission. Yeah, yeah. If, now we live a life without asking permission. I, if I need to take Molly to the doctor, I don't have to put in for the time off. Or, you know, if we want to just go on vacation next week and it's and we're in a spot where we can do it, we can just go. I remember whenever you, you'd have vacations... Uh, they would have to do like a drawing or something it was like a lottery thing we did every year and it was so aggravating because you have people there's there was a couple of women that worked there that had been there for over 15 years at that bank and here comes a new employee been there less than a year and we do our lottery and they get christmas off it was so unfair you know so that was kind of aggravating and um sometimes you just got stuck with the I mean, it was a bank. You still had the holidays off, but there's certain times you want to take vacation, like when your kids are out of school and stuff. And sometimes it just didn't happen. Right. So it's nice to have that freedom to go when we want to. There's definitely a cost, though. Yeah. yeah there is. Because now 100% of our income comes from eBay, um, YouTube, etc. It's all like there's a lot more pressure yeah there's nothing to fall back on <laughs> no there's yeah. like oh well at least we got this steady check yeah. you know th there's no such thing as that and don't get me wrong i feel confident that if something happened and this all blew up in our face that lonnie and i could both get a, a, a good job i think candace could i don't know about me i'm not sure that I, i'm employable at this point you could go deal a poker somewhere oh no <laughs> That that's no. That would be last resort, but we both could just go get a job at a casino. We uh, that would be, we would have to. It would be very last resort, but that is something we could fall back. Oh my god, I feel nauseous <laughs> thinking about doing anything like that. But yeah, you never know. You never know. We got a little taste of it on the cruise. We played some uh, poker just with our friends, um, and we didn't have any chips or anything. Do you want to tell them what we did? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> We were trying to figure out what we could use for in place of chips, so we went. This was uh, this was me, Candace, Ryan from Thrift Mine, and then uh, Justin, RVA Flips from RVA Flips. His wife. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what Justin was Justin doing. Justin was not feeling well. Justin, yeah, I think something. he was taking a nap. So we went to the buffet and we borrowed. God, how many did we have? couple hundred packs couple hundred packs we, we, of uh, sweetener <laughs> we used uh we had like the sweet and low pink packs and then the splenda yellow packs for two denominations and we just had pockets of them and those were our poker chips but it was yeah. fun and we did leave them i didn't take them um because i didn't want to get banned from that cruise line for stealing <laughs> sweetener <laughs> You should have seen though when people were walking by because we were in like a public area. We were like in the uh, main central area of the boat sitting on a table. Sitting there playing poker with our uh, our Raise You Three Splendor or whatever. <laughs> and you should have, like some of the people that they, they were walking by or whatever and then they realized what we were doing. They're like, huh? <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was fun. Um, Good question. Thank you, Wayne Panzer. Thank you, Wayne Panzer. Panzer Wayne. <laughs> Panzer Wayne. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's Ready time. Ready to start pulling orders? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. First item is on Five Fox Trot. It's a Danbury Mint Cupid doll in the box. Five Fox Trot. Five Fox Trot. Danbury Mint Cupid doll. It's in this big box, Candace. I didn't. No, white. Oh, I see it. Is it the white box that says Cupid? Probably. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that that was bought in that buy with the the Bert and Ernie and the um, bunch of doll clothes yeah. and um, and there were two of these Cupid dolls from Danbury Mint. Um, that one sold for twenty five. Okay, good. We sold a, a Tommy a car wash and gas station three alpha. Okay, it's gonna be up high here. It's a gas station. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Fifty-four dollars for that. That was from Guy. That is a seven oh five five six, correct? Seven oh five five six is okay. correct. Good. Um, we sold two nutcrackers. The first one is five Charlie Eft. It's a Confederate soldier. Five Charlie what? Left. Five Charlie. 
kind of know what he looks like. He's wearing blue, but he's got like the red hanging, oh, I don't know what you call that stuff. <laughs> oh, I see him. Holding his scabbard or Yeah, well, I, it also he says CSA on the uh, belt buckle there. Yeah. That's interesting. They they managed to make him without putting a uh, Confederate flag on there. Yeah, even I mean, because that's like vintage, just from the '90s, so they were thoughtful enough back then to not do that. Um, that one sold for sixty. Yeah, I'm glad they did because that would have been problematic. Yeah, we couldn't have sold him. Okay. We have two comic books, um, some Bronze Age comics, um, X six nine and J seven one. X69 and J71, eh? Yep. Let's see what we got. J71 was one of them? Yeah. That is the last one on Herb's number 11. Um... An X69? Yep. One Man Army Corps, number five. Yep, got that. Oh, some of these J's were out of order. And the other one was Commandy, Last Boy on Earth. Number 11. Number 11, it's 20 cent comic. Okay. <laughs> Good, I thought I was going to be missing that uh, J71. Those two together sold for twenty-one dollars and sixty-eight cents. Okay. Sold some more spark plugs, man. Those things are good, huh? I know. Just about every day. CC six. A lot of eight champion. I'm so glad I bought these. Oh yeah, they've been a gold mine. A lot of eight champion. Yeah. Are they the seven four zero sevens? Yes. Okay, got them. Those sold for $15. One Charlie is the other nutcracker. It's a one man band Santa. Uh, so I was looking at him yesterday. You must have touched him. I didn't. Oh. No, I, I just looked at him after it sold. Oh. I was just curious how big it was going to be. He's got a big old uh, hat. Yeah. He's just a big, just like solid wood. Yeah, he is. Yeah. $50 for that one very basic yeah very very nice but basic mm -hmm. classic look that's the uh glasser right that is richard glasser that's yes. how glassers are they're they're chunkier like that i've got the german word for one man band here i'm in capel or something like that i'm i'm in capel it helped whenever you said it like that <laughs> <laughs> um this was a nice surprise to wake up to this sale Oh, uh, yeah. Location says the wall, but they have been moved. It's one of those fraternity paddles. Okay, we got to make sure it works before we uh, ship it off. Okay. <laughs> Bend over. All right. This is the Phi Kappa Theta one. I don't know if that tells you anything. Can you tell? Uh, Phi Kappa, are they all? I think they all are. Oh, okay. It's to Bob 61 from Dawn 62. <laughs> Bob 61 this one right here double check that against the photos yeah. just to make real sure in this isn't that a weird thing for dudes to be giving each other I guess they maybe they pass the paddle like passing you think they the give them a little swat on the yeah I'm passing it to you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know they just doesn't that seem weird yeah all right Bob 61 Don 62 that's it. I think we paid five a piece for these. Mm -hmm. We ended up selling this one for $33.74. I'll take it. Starting to wonder if we'd ever sell one at all. We sold a pop on five Bravo. Baruto Ko Baruto Kawaki. Baruto Kawaki. Mm -hmm. On five Bravo? There he is. Sold him for $6. Kadook. Alright, the next order has 
four pieces of dog clothing on. Uh oh. Let's get the two lower ones first. They're both five Echo, 16 and nine. You know, let's go ahead and pull all four. Okay. And we'll be right back. All right, so um, four pieces of dog clothing. Oh, this is gonna be one well-dressed dog. They bought two camp shirts tie-dye and a striped and then this is cool it's a freddy krueger t-shirt oh that's cool and then a, a, a christmas sweater so hot cocoa and chill chill and it's got like a um hot cocoa mm. so all four of these together 43 dollars and 96 cents and then we have one more item to pull that's our etsy sale um it's on six bravo i believe delta delta yep yeah this guy right here, right? Yeah, it's a brass unicorn. It sold, I done forgot already. 20 bucks, 19 20, 20 plus shipping, yep. Yeah. That's a nice one, too. I, I liked like him, that, that he was sitting down. You don't see him like that very often. Yeah. We, we're suckers for buying the brass at garage sales. Especially unicorns. I like we, unicorns. We've done decent on brass. Mm -hmm. Just the brass ashtrays I haven't been the best. In fact, I um I bought something good brass this morning online from someone local that I'm gonna pick up this weekend. Yeah. That I think is really good. So yeah. I think we'll you're gonna... show you that after we get it. Okay. Let me go ahead and get this stuff packed. All right. We just got back from Granger and thought we'd show you what one of our orders looks like. Yep. This is it. This is uh, $205 in packing supplies here. Um, we have six four fours, about a hundred of those. Those were 30 cents a piece. Then those are eight six fours, about 200 of those at 35 cents a piece. And then we have 12 10 fours which those are a great deal, mm -hmm. um, 63 cents a piece. We used to pay, I want to say we were, before we were paying like 80 cents it or was something. 80, it was like 80 something cents, yeah. Yeah. And then we got 250 um, of the, this size bubble mailer. So, and then we also made, yesterday made an order for another thousand fifty feet of bubble wrap yep so we'll be well stocked yeah we'll be for stocked a while for yeah for um, a while. <laughs> yeah um still have 12 12 12s up there those are good the only thing i wish i would have ordered more of i wish i would have ordered another thing of white paper but don't we have a brown roll? I do. Down we haven't there. touched it yet. So we ordered last time we ordered, we got one brown and one white just to compare the quality, and they seem about the same to me. What do you think? I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't tried the brown yet. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do the brown once the white's done, and then you know, next time I'll probably order. I like the the roll white paper is so much nicer than the sheet paper because you can like change the length of the how sheets. Much you need. I think white just is a nicer presentation too. It lasts. I mean, I packed a lot with that roll. Yeah. And that that roll is a much better deal and easier to handle than the sheets I was buying at Sam's, which Sam's doesn't even sell they anymore. Don't carry anyway. it anymore, yeah. So, yeah, this was uh, we're we're digging the Granger stuff for sure. Mhm. Mm and I've seen a bunch of people in the Facebook group too that are. Um, that are buying Granger stuff too. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of locations across the country. Yep, yep. So we do end up with like a ton of every time. Like, look, this is these are the receipts for that order. Yeah, because I Cause, guess they have maybe a hub or something in maybe New Orleans or somewhere. So they fulfilled some, but then they the rest came in a couple of days later. So there's imports. there's a slip for each one. Yeah, instead of just one. <laughs> Big one. mess. I got yeah. to sign like six times. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. We, I started organizing the stickers, too. If y'all remember, we bought from that uh, Hot Rod garage a few weeks ago. So, still no game plan, but I figured I would organize them maybe by type. Like, all of these so far are Summit Racing. And just, then we'll kind of start looking things up and get a game plan of how we want to lock these things up. Right. We want to make good money on them. We also don't want to spend... We don't want to sell one sticker at a time. No. We don't want to... No. You know, there's a, there's a medium somewhere where we can reach. Right. So, uh, 
yeah but that is going to be it for this one thanks so much for watching and we will see y'all again very soon bye y'all bye